Hello everyone. In this particular video, I'll be explaining 10 widely used financial ratios. You will come across these ratios whenever you have decided to invest in the equity markets and when you want to analyze and find out which are the stocks you should buy, which are the ones you should avoid. So these are the 10 ratios that I would like to cover in this particular video. And what I thought is it, it becomes much easier to understand understand these ratios if I take an example and explain them. So I've taken this is a hypothetical company named XYZ Auto Corporation. So just for understanding sake, consider that this particular company is owned by 16 people and each person owns one share of this company. And the total shares of this company are 16. And so this one indicates a stock or, or a common share, a common share or a common stock. Let's, uh, let's also take that the current price per share of, of each stock is $10. That is the price per share for each share is $10. And to understand each of these terminologies better, uh, just think that this is the this is the profit and loss statement of this particular organization for the last ended financial year. Uh, the company makes a revenues of hundred dollars, out of which th that is the top line, out of which thirty dollars is operating cost. So what is left is seventy dollars. What and that is nothing but EBITDA. We call it as EBITDA. It's earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And from that, the interest cost, so this company has a debt of, uh, presume that this company has a debt of $100. Uh, so this money is generally take, uh, taken from the bondholders or the financial institutions. And so you need to pay interest for that, for, for that particular, particular debt that you taken, or wh what do you call as the cost of servicing debt. And this is $10. So what is left after that is, sixty dollars and maybe the depreciation amortization cost is ten dollars ten dollars more so so what happens is that whenever a company owns assets every asset depreciates by a certain uh, certain percentage every year so you also account for that in your in your uh, profit and loss statement so what is left after 70 after pay after paying interest and depreciation is uh, fifty dollars and that is your earnings before tax and say you have a taxes of eighteen dollar so what is left finally is the bottom line or we call it as net income that is thirty two dollars so this company made a profit of thirty two dollars in the last financial year so the total earnings of this company is thirty two dollars and that is what we obtain from here uh, and other than that what you have is you have a you have total equity which is two hundred dollars that is the equity bought by the bought by these shareholders that is the investment of these shareholders plus the profit that the company has accrued over a period of time so all that is the equity component and addition to that this company as I said earlier has a debt of hundred dollar okay. so this if since we have understood this particular chart and and rather this tables now it, it becomes very easy for us to understand each of these ratios. Market capitalization. What is market capitalization? Market capitalization is the stock price times the number of shares outstanding. So this particular company had a share price of 10 and the total shares are 16. So the market cap is $10 into 16 shares. So that is $160. EPS. What is earnings per share? The total earnings of this company was thirty-two dollars, and this company has sixteen shares. So, earning per share is two dollars. Move on to the next ratio, that is the PE ratio. PE ratio helps you to understand the valuations of a of a particular company. So, what is PE ratio? It is the price of the share to the earnings. Of, of earnings per share of, of that particular company. 
So over here, the price per share is ten dollars, and we already found that the earnings per share is two dollar. So the price to earning ratio is ten dollar by two dollar. That is five. The next value is the PB ratio or the price to book value ratio. So how do you calculate the price to book value? We already know the price per share. This is the way the book value is calculated. The total equity of the company is two hundred dollars. So that is the equity on the book of the company. So two hundred dollars is total equity of the company. You divide two hundred dollars by the number of shares. That is sixteen. So which is twelve point five. So twelve point five is the book value per share. So hence the price to book value is price of the share is ten. It divided by twelve point five zero point eight. So the price to book value is zero point eight. The next ratio is the dividend yield. So dividend is yield is calculated as the ratio of the dividend per share that the company gives to the price per share. So in this case. Just assume that the company made two dollar profit and has decided to give half that profit as dividends to the shareholders. So half of two dollars is one dollar. One dollar per share is the dividend, and the price per share is ten dollar. So the dividend yield, which is nothing but dividend to the uh, dividend per share to the price per share, and hence it is one dollar. By ten dollar, which is the price per share, point one, or rather ten percent. Dividend is always mentioned as a percentage, so ten percent is the dividend yield. Current ratio. Current ratio is the ratio of the current assets to the current liabilities. Current ratio indicates the ability of the company to to clear its current liabilities, uh, current and, and to run its current operating expenses. So, current assets is the sum of Cash and cash equivalents, liquid instruments, and the receivables, as well as the inventory. Current liabilities is the current obligation to vendors and the current interest obligations to bondholders and to financial institutions. That is the again the uh, the cost of servicing debt. Return on capital employed. Return on capital employed tells you for. Whatever capital that the company has invested, how how much earnings it is obtaining for that for that investment. So in our case, total equity of two hundred dollars and total debt of three hundred dollars is the investment of this company. So the total investment is three hundred dollars, and the numerator that is used to calculate it on capital employed is earnings before interest and taxes. So if you go to this sheet. The earnings before interest and taxes is fifty dollar plus ten dollar. That is sixty dollar. So return on capital employed will be sixty dollars. That is the numerator divided by the total investment, which is two hundred plus hundred, three hundred dollars. So return on capital employed will be. Sixty divided by three hundred, which is equal to point two, or in percentage terms, it is twenty percent. The next ratio is debt to equity ratio. So, for in this case, we know that the total debt of the company is hundred dollars, and the total equity. Of this company is two hundred dollars. So the debt to equity ratio is hundred by two hundred, which is point five. Debt to equity ratio shows us to what extent the company is dependent on external sources of debt to run its operations. So the so the smaller this number, the better it is. Which indicates the smaller the number, it indicates that the company's dependence on 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 debt is lesser. 
the next ratio is EBITDA by IE ratio that is earnings before interest taxes depreciation amortization to the interest and this is called as interest coverage ratio so this tells us how how less risky is the company's debt and the higher this ratio the better it is the higher this ratio it indicates that the company's company's ease to to service its debt is better so earnings per interest tax depreciation amortization in our case is this number EBITDA that is 70 and the interest is 10 so 10 by 70 rather 70 by 10 which is 7 so the interest coverage ratio for this particular company is 7 the last ratio that is the price to operating cash flow ratio this indicates how how expensive the company is in terms of the cash flow the operating cash flow that it generates so in our case we know that the price per share is ten dollar and the earnings per share the operating earnings per share is seventy so 70 is for the whole company so you need to divide 70 by 16 70 divided by 16 which is 4.375 so the price to operating cash flow ratio will be 10 divided by 4.375 that is equal to 2.28 one difference between the price to operating cash flow ratio and the price to earnings ratio is that earnings can come just not through operating income they can also come through certain other investments of this company or this company might uh, might have other in uh, might have investments in some company which might give you dividends or uh, this company might also also have um, bought debt instruments of other companies on which it gets interest so that is the earnings that comes through financial activities that is not the earnings that which come through operating activities nevertheless in our case the all the only source of earnings operating activities but many it could many companies might also have earnings through other through other activities which example financial activities so that is the fundamental difference between price to earning ratio and price to operating cash flow ratio price to operating cash flow ratio considers earnings only from its operations that is a cash receipt from operation only that particular cash is considered so using this particular hypothetical example i have explained all the all these 10 ratios in case you guys have any questions rather please feel free to comment on this thread and we will get back to you. Thank you.